I'm pleased to be joined today by Portland Thorns newest midfielder, Jesse Fleming, and of course, of the Canadian women's national team. Uh, Jesse, thanks so much for taking the time today. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm good. Um, just to start, obviously, a big tournament coming up for, for your national team, Canada. Uh, you got the Gold Cup, the inaugural uh, Women's Gold Cup. How exciting is it to, to look forward to a tournament like this to kick off a busy year for, for Canada? Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. I think there's lots of good teams in the tournament and it's a good opportunity for us to rehearse before the Olympics and yeah, just get some game time as a team. And how special will it be to, to compete for another trophy with this group? Uh, what, what do you think it would mean to, to win a CONCACAF trophy? Because it's been a, a while since you've had that chance while also balancing Olympic prep, like you mentioned. It's always special winning any tournament, especially when you look at the lineup of teams in the tournament. So, um, yeah, I, I think it would be really positive for us and um, just give us a lot of positive, good momentum going into the summer. And, you know, speaking of you know, huge Olympics coming up, especially that you, you head into this one with that target of being the gold um, medal winners from last time out. How are you looking forward to that challenge of, you know, heading into this tournament with the expectation that you want to win another one? I think the expectation is is always that we want to win the tournament when we go into it. And um, I think so much changes in years between tournaments. So I don't know if it's always fair to, to put that crown on people. But yeah, I think for us, we feel like it's a tournament that we've had a lot of success at in the past. And we're excited to be back there and, and competing for Canada. And I guess just speaking of looking back on those Olympics, how special was it to be a part of, you know, a run like that where it just came together, you guys were able to, to get that gold medal, especially yourself, personally, that you're able to step up and take some big penalty kicks, have some big moments. Like how special has that all been reflecting on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very special. Um, I think especially when you kind of, you know, look at the tournament this past summer and you can see how it can go the other way for a team. I think there's there's so many things that you need to go right. And um, I think you need a lot of your players kind of peaking at the right moment. And yeah, it, it, it worked for us that summer. And so I think it's just about right now asking ourselves the, the hard questions of how we can we can recreate that and and bring our, our, our best team to, to Paris this summer. And obviously a, a big thing to, to watch out for this year is just, you know, heading into that first major tournament without Christine. Um, having had a chance to play alongside her, for, uh, you know, with Canada, what was it be like? Uh, what was it like to be a part of those uh, celebrations last, you know, last winter in, uh, in Vancouver? And what, what's it going to be like to, to to have that first camp, first tournament without her? You feel? I think it was really special for all of us to get to celebrate Zink and Soph and Aaron um, at home as well. They've been such a huge part of this national program, and anyone who's on the team now has. Yeah, had the pleasure of you know spending a lot of time with them and, and playing with them. So I think it'll it'll definitely be different and an adjustment. But um, you know, I also think that we have a lot of experience on this team, and um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I mean, I I fully trust the group that we have here, and I think everyone shares that feeling. And you know, we all carry little pieces of Soph and Aaron and Sink, and you know, all the retired players of the past. They've they've taught us so much, and they've really created an environment that I think sustains itself past the past their playing time. Obviously a, a big hole uh, you know that will be missed will we'll be in that leadership that captaincy void uh, your name's definitely been thrown in the hat a lot for that you've captained the team before I guess just what what how special has it been to wear the armband for Canada and you know should you get that honor going forward what would it mean for you to be a captain of Canada? I mean it's it's incredibly special um, yeah I'm, I'm very proud to to represent my country let alone get to wear the armband and um yeah be able to to lead my teammates in that way and I think kind of similar to your last question I, I feel like so much trust in in this group right now we have a lot of different leaders and so um you know I think obviously losing sync is is a significant person to lose but it was always going to happen and um I think we have a really strong group dynamic right now and yeah, I think honestly we're just we're just focused on that. I don't, I don't think there's too much attention that that needs to be put on any one person. And at the club level, obviously going through some some changes recently with your move to Portland. But looking back, you know, you leave a very popular figure on that Chelsea side. What were some of your maybe favorite memories from from your time spent in London? Yeah, I mean, I, I love my time at Chelsea. I I made some really 
close friends and um, yeah, got to got to play with a lot of phenomenal players and um, got to live in a, a pretty cool city. So I, I feel really lucky to have spent as long as I did at that club. Um, and yeah, in terms of favorite memories, I mean, um, you know, we got to got to play in some pretty big games and um, won a few trophies. I, th- I think playing Barcelona at Camp Nou. Uh, the semifinal of the Champions League was was really special for me just because I grew up supporting Barcelona. But but yeah, I would say honestly, I, I made from some friends that I'll stay in touch with for the rest of my life. And um, yeah, it was just a really fun, competitive training environment that I, I loved going into every day. So uh, yeah, just feel very lucky that I got to, to be part of that club. And what were some of the biggest things you're able to learn in an environment like that where, like you mentioned, such world-class players, you know, world-class coach, what are some of those little things you can take away from being in that sort of environment day in, day out? Yeah, I mean, lots of things. I think, you know, just growing as a player and becoming more adapted to, to playing at a faster play, pace, playing with more physical players. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think just like getting to watch players like Ji So Yun and Fran Kirby and Sophie Ingle, you know, operate on a day-to-day basis. I think you just learn things and pick up things um, in, in what they do in their game. Now you get to join a very exciting Portland side, and you know, in its own regard. I uh, just firstly, what were kind of some of those conversations like with Karina LeBlanc? I imagine you're quite familiar with when she was maybe talking about bring you in, and you know, what are you looking forward to most with this Thorn side? You know, when you look at Portland, it's it's maybe a bit different to Chelsea in that they have kind of quite a, a young team, and I think that's something that really excites me. Um, I'm especially excited for the midfield, getting to play with Hina and Liv and Sam Coffey um, was, yeah, definitely a big draw for me. And I feel like we can build a really solid unit there. So that was, yeah, something that really excited me. Um, we actually played in Portland, I think, two summers ago with Chelsea. And so I got to experience um, the fans and the city there as a player. And that was another big piece for me. I think just getting to be at a club that's so closely attached to their community and um, yeah, just has such a big support in the city. Um, and then I think, you know, getting to be closer to home is is also big for me. Um, yeah, I've lived pretty far away from home for quite a few years now. And so it was just a, a good opportunity that, that happened to be closer to home and hopefully I'll get to see my, my family more often. So that was definitely a big piece too. And yeah, I mean, it's it's nice having Canadians there. You know, I had Keish and Ash and Chelsea, which was really nice. And now I have Sink and Janine. So, um, yeah, definitely a little part of Canada there helps too. How is it going to be like getting to play with, you know, Janine and, and Christine, especially now that you might not be seeing, you know, Christine as much uh, with internationally? How special is it going to be to to share some of these, you know, moments that she has with the this Thorns team that she's obviously a huge part of? You know, anytime I get to play with Sink, it's... Yeah, it's just a, a pleasure. She's she's a very fun player to play with. And um, yeah, obviously just has a ton of experience in the game and is a, a big player for them and a great leader for them. So I, I still think there's so much that I can learn from her. And, um, you know, with her and Janine, I've, I've played with them for so many years, so they know me really well and, and I know them really well. And so I definitely think there's a bit of comfort there and um, comfort, but I think we're also comfortable challenging each other. So it's nice to know that I, I have them to lean on in a new environment. Over the, the past few years, you've had the chance to kind of play up as an eight, play as a 10. You've seen you on the wing, played a little deeper almost as a six. Uh, what has kind of been your, your favorite position amongst those you've had a chance to, to play? And what are some things you've kind of learned from playing, you know, more offensively, more out and out wing or deeper on the pitch? I definitely think I've, I've learned a lot from the different positions that I've played. I th- I think I kind of see myself as, you know, halfway in between a 10 and a 6. I, d- I definitely think I'm, um, yeah, kind of that hybrid midfielder that can, you know, maybe link the back to front and do the work defensively in our box and then get up and, and join the the opposition box when we're trying to score. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, playing a position like winger or playing higher as the 10, you maybe get used to playing with your back to goal more often and then playing lower, I think, kind of that awareness of having to play on fewer touches and play maybe a little bit lower risk game. So um, I think it's all, you know, kind of helped me balance out my game and yeah, continuing forward, just, you know, whatever position I play, just trying to do, do my best at it and allow it to add to my game. 
now, of course, uh, you know, you're still quite young, but you've, it's been over a decade with the, the national team. Uh, just looking back on that, how, how special has it been to, to have gotten to experience this, experience this for over a decade? And what are some of the biggest things you've learned from, you know, your 10 plus years on this national team? Yeah, it's gone by so quickly. It's it's crazy to to stop and think that it's been that long. But no, I mean, like playing for the national team has yeah changed my life. It's it's taught me so much as a, a footballer and a person. Um, yeah, I've had the privilege to play and um, you know learn from players and people like Sink and Aaron McLeod, Diana Matheson, and yeah, I mean they've taught me so much both on and off the pitch. I think. I yeah, just definitely feel a lot more settled in myself as a, a human and um, more complete as a footballer being a part of this team. And yeah, like I've got some of my best friends here and, and Quinn and Vanessa. So it's yeah, it's, it's really special for me. And I'm a, a very proud Canadian and proud of where I come from. So I just yeah, I feel very lucky that this has been a part of my life and hopefully I can you know, find ways to, to give back to the program and, um, yeah, just keep keep trying to do my best on the pitch and, um, yeah, influence the team in, in the most positive way I can. So, yeah, yeah there's yeah, just so many, so many moments that I'm grateful for. And, yeah, I, I just I feel very lucky to be a part of this group. You know, last year, a bit of a, a, a fun, you know, thing that ended up happening on social media is that some old clips of a young Jesse Fleming running some cross country emerged online ahead of the World Cup as a reminder of, you know, some of uh, the running you used to do in your past days. So I'm just curious, what are some memories of that, that old news hit that you did? And looking back, how important was uh, the running side of your game that you're able to do younger, able to help the fitness that you have today? You know, fitness is definitely a big aspect of soccer. So that's always something that um, I think it's been a big part of my game, but yeah, I think I just grew up in a, a running family um, and it's kind of just a nice pastime. Like when I go home in the off season, it's always nice getting out for a run with my dad and brother and sister. Um, so yeah, it's just something that we kind of always connected on as a family and it's nice to look back on that piece. And, you know, I think when I retire, maybe it's something that I'll, I'll pick up again. Um, but yeah, for now, focus is soccer. Thanks so much for, for taking the time, Jesse, and best of luck with all that soccer you've got to play this year, including the Gold Cup, Portland, and of course, the Olympics. Thank you so much. Thank you.